the welcome to my, uh, our first speaker, Mr. Zora. Thank you. Thank you. So let me introduce you to the organization Julia GNSS and uh, some of the packages that I uh, implemented. So back in the days when I worked for university, we tried to uh, build a robust uh, GNSS receiver. You know, the satellites are quite, quite far away and the signals that arrive at the Earth are uh, low powered. So they, it's very easy to, uh, to, to interfere with them. Uh, so we used antenna arrays, and with antenna arrays you can do fancy stuff. You can, for example, um, amplify signals from certain direction of arrivals and mitigate uh, other signals from other direction of arrivals. Uh, so here, for example, we have a jamming signal that's mitigated coming from this direction of arrival, and we have the signal of interest, which is, for example, a GNSS, a GPS or C, uh, uh, satellite that uh, uh, is amplified. But you can also do other fancy stuff. For example, you can estimate the attitude of an antenna array in terms of jaw, pitch, and rod angle. And this is me here, uh, rotating an antenna array with four, four patches, a two by two antenna array. And you can see me rotating the antenna array. And on the right side, you see the, esti uh, the attitude estimate uh, of this antenna. And you can see they, they match quite well. It's just by using the GNSS signals uh, without any inertial measurement unit or so. So back in the days uh, when I started, um, we uh, always recorded the measurements to file because uh, our uh, um, receiver that we've implemented uh, at that time uh, wasn't uh, capable of doing anything in real time. Uh, we used a software that starts with M. And then I found Julia and I, I sat down and um, I, I thought about how to make this uh, work in real time. So um, when looking at it, you can essentially um, um, split apart the receiver in two or three components. So there's the um, down conversion and correlation. This has uh, a high data rate input. So you can think, think of um, the signal that comes in with a bandwidth of two, uh, of a minimum of two up until 20 megahertz or even 50 megahertz. And then uh, after correlation, the signal is compressed. And after that, you only have uh, a signal of a, uh, of, a, um, of a data rate of a, a thousand hertz or hundred hertz, depending how long you correlate. And um, then you can do the code and carrier, Doppler estimation, frame synchronization, decoding, and in the end, the user position. All of those are low powered. Uh, sorry, uh, they, they, these functions don't need to be that uh, fast. So I sat down uh, and uh, wondered how can I make the down conversion and correlation really fast so that we can do that in real time. So, and I'd like to walk you through uh, the journey of generating sine and cos values to down convert the signal. So this is only part of what needs to be fast. And uh, the first uh, function that came, came to my mind was the KISS function. It generates the cosine and the sine values in a complex fashion. Um, and you can see here, um, I, I calculated with the Doppler and the sampling frequency, uh, and um, I benchmarked it with uh, 2,000 samples, and that correlates to uh, data of one milliseconds, of one millisecond. And you can see that uh, the benchmark um, for this KISS function for this one millisecond of data is around 20 microseconds. So you can think of it, you can process 50 satellites in parallel with this function. But remember, that is only the sine and cos value um, calculation, but you still need to do with the, co co um, the down conversion and the correlation. So that was nowhere feasible to do in real time. Then I thought about maybe we can go, um, we can be, get better if we use the float 32 instead of float 64 to uh, better um, use the ZIMD efficient efficiency. Yeah, and it turns out you can do a little bit better, but still it's not feasible for real time. Then I implemented my own um, uh, sine and cos approximation using polynomials, and um, I thought about 
we already have seen this reduction from 64 bits to 32 bits. Maybe we can do better with uh, 16 bits. Uh, there was no float 16 bits, so I implemented everything in integer 16. And it turns out you can do much better if you use this float 16, uh, sorry, the in 16 uh, integer values. But that comes with the problem. Um, we also need the, the phases in integer 16. So uh, the, to, to, to calculate the, the phases, uh, it, it um, takes roughly 1.5 microseconds. And in, in addition, with the, um, with the sine and cos calculation, you are around at 1.7 microseconds, which is OK. You can do that in real time then. But at the same time, loop vectorization came out, and this was capable of doing it uh, just in one microsecond. So I used that. So um, I did this benchmarking with all the um, things that need to be fast, like down conversion, sine and cos uh, calculation, and correlation. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that it is now capable to do this in real time. So here I had a software-defined radio platform uh, hooked into my computer. And you can see here on the left side, it's um, it tracks the satellites in real time. And uh, I will show you in the next picture. Um, it, here on the left side, it shows the signal-to-noise ratio or the carrier-to-noise density ratio of several satellites. Uh, here on the in the middle, you see that uh, the, the direction of arrival of the satellites, and here on the right side you can see the the position of the user in latitude, longitude, altitude. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yep. Many thanks for the interesting talk. Uh, I have a question related to, um, I'm, I'm quite new to Julia. How was the interfacing to the software-defined radio that you used? Were there already packages available? Yeah, there is one package available that uses the SOPI SDR, which is um, a, a SDR software platform that you can use with several different plat uh, hardware platforms, um, and I used that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So in this in this case, it's just two megahertz because the software-defined radio platform, the, the RTL SDR, isn't capable of doing more. But uh, um, the software that I implemented is capable of doing going up to five megahertz or even ten megahertz. I haven't tested it that really. Um, uh, what was crucial for me was also to not uh, only uh, process one antenna array, uh, antenna signal, but multiple antenna signals. And yes, you can all of that. Do, uh, you can do that all uh, in real time. If you do multiple antennas with RTL SDR, um, how do you? phase lock them because they all have their own oscillators. Yeah. Good, good question. Uh, I haven't used the RTL SDR for that. Uh, I used an Etos uh, software defined radio platform for that. They have this phased array um, thing, but uh, I know that there's a, um, a project called Kraken SDR, I think, uh, which combines the RT RTL SDRs uh, together. I think there are five, five of them combined together with phase locked. Uh, but I haven't used that uh, thing yet. So, um, so you said you started with uh, MATLAB, yeah. and then initially, and yes. then you couldn't get to the speed, and then yeah. you started in Julia, and you added a lot of optimizations. Yes. Would it would it be fair to also check how some of those optimizations, mm -hmm. uh, what it would yield in, in, in performance in MATLAB? Yeah, I, I think you could if you put really hard work into into this. You could also make it work in re uh, in, in MATLAB work in real time, because it, in the end it's a lot of matrix multiplication. This um, uh, this thing that needs to be really fast. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not totally sure. I haven't tested. Like, okay, thank you. 